Hello viewers, welcome to the video lecture series for the job role Hand Embroiderer Class 9th. In this session of Unit 3, we will take up the topic Embroidery Defects. A defect means a fault or a flaw of any kind. Defects are naturally undesirable because most often they deteriorate the appearance and beauty of products. They may also affect the functioning of a product, make it slow or make it function less than its efficiency. For example, a defective watch, a defective phone, a defective t-shirt or a defective dress and so on. Defects can occur due to many reasons. Common among them are carelessness, working in a hurry, not following instructions properly, so on and so forth. Let us now look at some of the common embroidery defects. But first, what are embroidery defects? Whatever may be the reason behind defects, but one thing is sure, no one wants to buy a defective item. Thus, defective products remain unsold or are sold at a loss. Similarly, defective embroidered goods are also sold at a lesser price. Defects may also occur in apparel items, especially embroidered products. These only are called as embroidery defects. Embroidery defects may occur while doing the embroidery or while finishing an embroidered product. Some of the common embroidery defects are fabric damage or needle holes, fabric gapping, missed trims, improper placement of embroidery design, poor design registration, bunching at the corners, thick embroidery, poor stitch density and poor hooping. Let us now look at these defects one by one. Fabric damage or needle holes. Delicate fabrics like chiffon, organza, net etc. are specially prone to fabric damage or needle holes. If the fabric tension is too tight or if a thicker needle is used for such delicate fabrics, then they may develop permanent holes or may even tear by repeated coming of the needle. So how to prevent and rectify these defects? Use correct type and size of needle. Do not use a very thick needle or thread for sheer and delicate fabrics. Do not add a lot of stitches on the same spot and do not fill the stitches too tightly at the same spot. The next embroidery defect that we are going to talk about is fabric gapping. Fabric gapping occurs when the base fabric is visible beneath the embroidered motif. Sometimes, if the stitches are not close enough in filling embroideries such as satin stitch, long and short stitch, then we can see the base fabric from under the motif. Such an embroidery looks imperfect and the product's beauty is also negatively affected. So how to prevent and correct this defect? Do not be in a hurry while doing the embroidery. Do not use a very thin thread or if the thread is too thin, then use more number of strands. Make the stitches tightly packed or closer. Still, if you find a gap has occurred, then take the same thread and embroider with the same stitch in the area having the gap. The next effect is missed trims. When loose threads and strands of embroidery thread are left on the front or right side of the embroidery, it is called as missed trims. These are loose hair-like extensions which are left unattended. This also happens if the embroiderer forgets to finish the embroidery properly or when the embroiderer forgets to bring the thread down while re-threading the needle or putting a new thread. How to rectify missed trims? Simply speaking, Mist trims can be rectified by cutting them or if the thread is too long then you may bring down the thread and finish it properly. Next effect that we are going to talk about is improper design placement. Sometimes while tracing the fabric or the tracing paper may get disturbed or moved. As a result the axis or placement of the design also gets disturbed. The design may move up it may move down from the intended position or it may become slightly tilted or skewed. So how to rectify this? 
always pin your fabric before putting the tracing paper and then also pin the tracing paper to the fabric before you start to trace the design. Also check the placement of the tracing paper before you trace the design. Use a designated spot or a designated table for tracing. Check the placement of traced design on the fabric after tracing and before starting the embroidery. If you find incorrect tracing, then trace it again. The next effect that we are going to talk about is poor design registration. This happens when the tracing is not done properly or is very light. That is, the design has not been registered properly on the fabric. It can also happen if certain line or parts of motif are missed while tracing. This may result in incomplete or skipped stitches, hence an incomplete embroidery. So how to correct or prevent this? Trace the design properly. Check the design after tracing and before you begin to embroider. If you find missing lines or parts or lighter parts, then either trace again or better, you draw the motif by hand again. Bunching at the corners. This defect occurs when there are too many stitches on the corners of the embroidered motif. As a result, the corners look very thick and shabby as compared to the other parts of the motif. This is called as bunching at the corners. So how to rectify these and prevent these? Do not take too many stitches at the corners. Finish the corners very patiently and carefully. Cut the extra stitches and threads and make a very small, almost invisible knot so that the motif looks perfectly finished. Next effect that we are going to talk about is thick embroidery. This happens when the stitches are too closely placed and the thread is also thick. So how to prevent it? Keep even distance between the stitches. Do not use a very thick thread and do not make the stitches too close. Next effect that we are going to talk about is poor hooping. A hoop is the ring which is used to catch the fabric while doing embroidery. If the hoop is too tight or too loose, then the fabric will have wrinkles. As a result, when the hoop is taken out after finishing the embroidery, the fabric around the embroidery looks puckered, even the motif may have certain wrinkles around it. So how to rectify this? Use a wooden hoop if possible. If using a plastic hoop, cover the hoop rings with cotton fabric scraps. Keep the tension just enough, nor too tight, neither too loose. That's all for this video. In next video, we will learn about finishing and costing of embroidered products in session 2 of unit 3. Till then, enjoy watching and keep learning. Thank you.